Hello. So I'm Stefanos. I'm a software engineer at Piper. We are building a, a, a web app for managers. And um, as a software engineer, at some point in my career, I decided that I have something that I want to share to the world. So I tried to make a, a library and publish it to PyPy. I tried to do it with a few libraries. I have published about 10 of them. None of them have become viral or anything, but I have tried to do it many times. I've made many mistakes uh, in the process. I hope that every subsequent one that after the first one was better and evolving. And one of the biggest problems that I, I had um, when I was publishing my first library was there's nothing, there's no manual, no, no documentation, no how to do it. I mean, yeah, you can find how to get something from your computer up to PyPy, but it's not exactly the same as writing code for you or for a company. So most of this, uh, uh, the examples and the ideas will come from this library, YAM, that I have written. Uh, I'm the author. Uh, and this will be the main example. It's not the library that has the most downloads from the ones that I have written, nor the first, not the last, but I think it's, it's the one that I, the most well thought out. So that's why I will draw examples from this one. So in order to start, this is just a very incomplete, very inaccurate categorization of Python projects, but it's, it's project that you, you make has different uh, problems, and you kind of want, of want to treat it differently. So you can write a library, you can write a server like a Django server, a Flask server, or you can write a CLI. We will focus mainly on the first thing because that's what mainly gets published to, to PyPy. Uh, so what's different from writing uh, like coding for your company and writing a web server in Django. The first one is that your audience is much bigger and it's, you, you don't know your audience. Like if you, if you have a, a Django server for your company and something goes wrong, you, you know everyone. You can say, oops, I made the mistake in deployment, let's roll back. But this is not exactly an option when you, you publish a library. It's there, and it's kind of there forever. And the other thing that's different is that because you don't know uh, your audience, you don't really know how the people will work and use uh, your library. So you may write a bug and people may start treating it as functionality and may start depending on your bug. So it's, it's not just fixing a bug. You, you, you fix a bug and you, you might get a, an email, hey, I, I, I was relying on that, w what can I do? So this is another big difference. So uh, let's, so this brings me to, to my first point on what you should think of. And this has, uh, this is about building the API. So when you, you publish a library, the first thing that has to be well thought is the API. So you will expose some functions, some classes uh, that you intend people to use. Uh, and you will have some code that is kind of code that you expect people that they will not use. So marking it as private with a leading underscore is, is a good practice to, to, 
to sow your intent. You, you don't know that people will actually uh, respect that, but I mean, there's only so much you can do when you, you uh, provide uh, something. Also, a very good idea is in the init.py of every module to have a, the done the role uh, list that says what's your API that you, you intend people to use. Uh, that, and a good idea also is to, to limit uh, the init py to expose the interface only. You, you can hide everything somewhere else and just expose it with the all or imports in the init py. Uh, this will also help, uh, in my opinion, with testing as well. Uh, so the second thing is supporting stuff. So ideally, uh, any published li library should aim to support uh, all the Pythons that are officially supported. So to do that, you should also test for all the libraries that you do that. Tox is a good idea. My libraries are in GitHub, so I use GitHub Actions. And I have this. I support this, uh, these Python versions. Sometimes it's hard, like you have a dependency. Um, famously, NumPy kind of doesn't support the oldest one. It, it, it's a bit uh, unaligned, so y you might not be able to do that, but you should try to aim to, to support the, uh, the latest version and the the latest supported versions so another good idea which doesn't have to do with PyPy exactly is uh, most developers will use your uh, app with, from pip they will do a pip install this thing but uh, that's not always the case. If, if it has a CLI uh, element, it's, it, it stands to reason that people will install it in their operating system. Like if you have something like poetry or uh, black or something, people will want to use it as a standalone thing. So providing a package for the major operating systems uh, is a good idea and it's, it's easier if you do it as the author because you know, if it has a strange thing in setup, you can control it. You know the dependencies better than everyone, so it's kind of easy to test on your machine, installing, reinstalling, and changing. So uh, I, I think that this is a good advice in general. So my, the other thing that I, I, I think it's a good idea when you start building a library is the first version number to be 010, like or 001, it, it doesn't really matter, but start with Semper. If you want to move to calendar versioning, uh, you, you can. It's, it's easy to go from 010 to 2211, but it's very hard if you see that, oh, I don't need calendar versioning. I need Semper to, to move back because it will be like going a version back. So and I think this is from another library that I have, that if you don't uh, want to use semantic versioning, it's good to explain why. So this is from a, a library that I have that uh, has uh, ISO codes uh, for currencies and country names and all these things, which are things that, well, my API is very stable, but 
when the countries change names, it's not like a software decision. It, it's a political decision. So people know that in, in 2023, country A renamed themselves to, to that. So people will want to know which year, which month uh, this uh, has to do. So if you, if you want to use maybe commit hashes as version, that's fine, but explain why so people know, so people can decide what to do and how to, to treat it. So the other thing that I, I this was a big mistake that I made initially. So the first thing that I, I published, I pinned all the uh, dependencies. So actually people couldn't use it because they had to have the specific version for everything that I had. Uh, and because when people will use a, a library, you don't know the other things that they have. Um, they can use it uh, in a lot of settings. Uh, being as permissive as possible is, is good because you have a bigger audience. Um, if, let's say, I, I say this needs uh, DJ settings 2.2.1, only people who have this specific one will be able to use it. And separating, uh, if you use a tool like poetry to match your dependencies, which is a good idea. Uh, you can separate the dev ones with the non-dev ones, so people who want to not to download the source code and run the tests and everything will not get all the dependencies that you have for, you know, linting, uh, testing, and all these things. Uh, my my personal thinking about log files, because Poetry is creating uh, log files, is if you are building a library, keep them out. I know that, like, famously, NPM disagrees with that. Uh, I can see the advantages on having them or not having them, but I think for a library, it's better to, to let Poetry do what they need to do. So, one, one other thing um, is the project structure. So, when I first started building my, my first um, library, I was, okay, I, I'll copy the way I do it uh, in my company, in the Django apps that we have, and it wasn't working because the way that things get installed by PIP, it's not exactly the same uh, as what you, you run if you, if you have the, uh, the directory here. So um, like this is from YAM. I, I want to be able to do from YAM import something, but this is in a directory somewhere in the virtual environment. So uh, specifying all these things is very easy with poetry. Uh, and I believe that this is a very good um, separation to keep your documentation, the source code, and the test separate. People who install the library don't care at all about the tests. You don't, they don't even have to, to install them. They don't care about the docs. They just want the source. So this can say, this is the source. And documentation, well, one good thing is to have documentation because people will, will need to understand how, how your uh, code works. And it's kind of cleaner to have it um, separate, totally separate 
in another uh, directory. And this also makes it easier for PyTest to, to find the, the tests and run them without any issues. Uh, also things that it's good to consider to, to include is uh, README, which is not exactly the same as documentation. README is what people will see when they visit your GitHub page. So it should be, in my opinion, something like, this is an easy example that you can copy paste. Here are some links for, let's say, the full docs, uh, some, some small information like a TLDR version of your documentation. A good thing is the change log, because when versions change, it's good to have just a file that people know that I can go take a look and they know if they can upgrade or not or if they have to do something. And the license is very important, especially if you want this to be used uh, in, a, in a more uh, corporate environment. A, a good candidate for me is LGPL, MIT is a good license. It's good to be permissive. If you are open sourcing something, you, probably you don't need to have one of the very uh, strict uh, license to protect your copyright. You, you, you are setting something with everyone in the world, so permissive licenses are better. So another thing uh, that I, I found, um, I have found very strange when I, when I started, uh, when I wanted to code, is that the first, before writing my own library, I said, okay, let's contribute to uh, another library. And because you have to start somewhere, it's good to, for, for someone to, to try it where people who know what they are doing uh, are. So uh, one good thing is be very welcoming to newcomers. If you have a famous, if your library becomes viral, you will attract newcomers. Just make clear what is the goal, what's not the goal of the library, because you just don't want to implement everything. You have a specific thing, but be clear, explain, and you know, let uh, and be supportive to people that want to to join the open source community. It's one of the strengths of uh, the biggest strengths of Python, our community. So being welcoming is good. And there are some general parting thoughts, some mistakes that I made. Um, so don't delete published versions. So one of my first uh, libraries that I published, I realized that, you know, I, I thought, okay, this is a patch version, so why would anyone want to download 0.1? 1.1, now that I have 0 0.1.2. And I went to PyPy and deleted the previous patch version, which then I got an email from someone and uh, that was complaining. And, you know, I cannot install something that I was able to install. And then I tried to re-upload it. It's, you can't. So, it, if, if you want to delete something, if there is a very, very good reason to do, like something that, like a password, or I don't know. It's better to change the password. Think very, very hard before deleting a published version. The second thing is test on PyPy. It, a test on test PyPy. So, Apart from PyPy, there's test PyPy that you can upload something, and if it breaks, no one cares. 
but it's a good thing to, to see, does my upload script work? Uh, have I forgotten anything? Is there something that I should do uh, differently? So Test Pi Pi is a, a very nice sandbox. The, the second thing is being as permissive as, as possible with, with everything, uh, with how the library will be used, with which dependencies are there, uh, and everything should be open for use from every possible user. Because there's no way that you can guess how people will use what you, you are supplying. Um, the other thing is it's good to update fast. So in October, Python 3.11 will be out. It's good if you have a library not to wait for months and months. Uh, because like in, in my company, we, we, want, we will want to update to Python 3.11 because it's faster. So if a, comp if a library doesn't support it, we will consider dropping it. And that's not just in my uh, workplace. It will be in many workplaces. So if you, if you wait too much to support the next version, well, you, you will lose. Uh, and uh, another thing about updating is, uh, is about keeping up with the latest versions of your dependencies as well. Uh, because it's most of the times you, it's not just your, um, you are not using just the standard library, you are using other libraries as well. So um, that's, that's all that I wanted to, to, to say and you know, if anyone has any questions, Please. Yeah, first let's have a generous round of applause. <laughs> and since we have some time left, let's see if the microphone works. Since we have some time left, we should do a QA. <coughs> <Sure. If> so <coughs> if somebody has a question, please yeah. come to the microphone. Hi, thank you for your talk. Um, I have a question in regards to the log files of poetry. When you publish a library, can you... Close. Close, like, yeah. like this? Okay, so when you publish a library um, and you have a log file, does that influence the, uh, the required packages of the library or is oh. it just for local installation? N I, wasn't, I was talking about GitHub. I, I think that it, doesn't, it shouldn't even be in the... In version control. Uh, right. The reason is, and why I think this should happen, is that when someone tries your library, or you have your desktop and you, you want to go to your laptop, you'll have the, the latest uh, dependencies. So right. uh, you, you get, uh, it's easier for things to fail fast. So if there is a breaking change, it will fast as soon as possible and you will have time to, to change it. Uh, so I don't know if I had the same approach if I had um, something like requests that's used, like has a billion downloads or something like But in the, in the libraries that I have seen, it, that, you know, it's, they have some users, like YAM is used in our production daily without problems. And it has like 10K, 100K downloads or something. Uh, it's, I think it's better to, to fail fast, uh, to, to see issues as soon as possible. So that's why I say leave them out. Yeah, okay, so that's when you, when you install directly from, um, from a checkout repository. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, I'll quickly have a look at the back if we have remote questions. 
since I don't see any, we'll continue with the next local question. Uh, thank you very much for the talk. I mm. have a question regarding, so uh, not locking dependencies. How would you test and make sure that your library works with many version of, uh, the, li of the dependencies that you have for your library? So uh, if you use something like docs, you can specify that I want this to be, like if, if one of your dependencies is Django and you want to support Django um, 2.0 uh, to 4.1, you can just say this, this is the matrix and test for all these uh, Django versions. And it will automatically, I, I, I'm not a tox expert, but I, I've seen the toxiny and I know that when you say test for these Django versions, it does the right thing, so. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the question. Do we have any further questions from the audience? And there's a final question coming. No, are you running away from the question? Please. <laughs> no, I'm going to ask a question. Thanks. <laughs> uh, do you find that there's certain contributors that want to get all the fancy new features from Python and say, hey, I'm just doing only 3.10 and above? Or is, for the most part, people trying to support as much Python versions as possible? I, so mainly, I think that there are some shiny versions. Like when F strings came out, I saw that most people said, okay, I, I'm not gonna support anything without F strings because I don't want to, to write dot format. But I have generally the feeling that people are okay because most of us work in an environment that like most companies have the oldest supported version. So, most people also want to be able to use what they contribute to. It's natural. So I have the feeling that people are okay with supporting old-ish versions of, uh, of Python. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your talk. Okay, so that concludes the Q&A. So what's left is to thank Stefanos again for his presentation. So let's have a round of applause. Thank you.